All right, guys, welcome to our very first client chiropractic video. It's a video on introducing uh, introduction into reversing debilitating lifestyles. So why Nate? Why do I have to learn this stuff? So A, the first step towards fixing a problem is understanding there is a problem. And B, you can't fix a problem unless you understand it. So we're going to drop some knowledge on you, help you understand things about your spine, your body, and what you're doing throughout your daily life that might be contributing to the issues that you have. Everyone's different and we'll get into that. So let's take a look here. So the three major things we'll be talking about are posture, exercise, and chiropractic. And there's a lot of misconceptions about these three topics and a lot of different ideas. This is a major misunderstanding revolving around these three topics. And this has a lot to do with an improper mindset prevalent in America and other first world countries. So I'm gonna make two statements here that not everyone's, everyone's going to agree with but your posture is not genetic it doesn't grow in your family and what we see can be reversed people think it's okay to look like this guy this guy this guy and not the normal guy they think oh it's just age or it's just my genes, I'm supposed to be all slumped for and my spine's supposed to be all crooked. It's not true. Moving on. So how do I distort my body to achieve this correct posture? People think that they need to alter the way they're standing and put their joints in different positions and different angles to be in the right position. And that's not that about it. It's not about that at all. It's about strengthening weak muscles. That's all it's about. Why, why, why don't people stand in proper posture? Because it's hard. Because they're weak muscles. You're using weak muscles. So that's the first thing. All right. Just making sure I said everything. Moving on. <laughs> Doc, I'm tired. I'm on my feet all day. If you if you say exercise one more time, I'm just going to have a freak out. That's what I get a lot. It's not all your muscles are weak, and I'm not calling you a weakling when I tell you you have weak muscles. It's like, oh, you're weak. you got to go to the gym and work everything. No. Certain muscles that are weak. And based on your posture, we can usually spot these, and a lot of people have the same ones. People fit into different categories, and we'll get into that later. So stretching is a bad word in the practice. I don't like it. Stretching does work. We'll get into that later. And it's about bringing balance to your body. So every muscle has a synergist. And what is a synergist? So we can think about this like your bicep and your tricep muscle. So the biceps on your upper arm, it flexes your forearm towards you. So what happens when the bicep is flexed? What does the tricep do? The tricep is stretched. And when you straighten your arm, what happens? The tricep is flexing and the bicep is being stretched. So most people tend to work their bicep more because our elbows are always bent. We're at computers like I am now. We're using mouses. We're lifting objects. Triceps don't get a lot of use. So I see a lot of people with bent elbows. They can't even straighten their elbows, or it's just one or the other arm. So there's an imbalance, and that's just one example. Every muscle has a synergist. We'll get into those later. Actually, I think very shortly we'll get into those. We see it right here. So upper cross and lower cross syndrome. I also call this first world posture. I just caught myself slouching a little bit. So we can see with this guy, we see some X's. So if we draw from one point to the other point, we have the inhibited muscles, which are the weak muscles. And on the other side, we have the tight muscles. Works the same up here. So this is lower cross, this is upper cross. Pretty simple, right? Straightforward. So people have rounded shoulders because they're tight in their pecs. It's pulling their shoulders forward. And the head follows the shoulders. So you can see how his ear is way in front of his shoulder. 
And you can see how his hip is way in front of his shoulders. So the ear and the hips are in line, but those shoulders are way out there. Some people have the other problems. Some people, their hips are way back. So what we're going to do in other videos, we're not going to teach it all to you now because there's just way too much content to go over, is we're going to teach you how to strengthen the weak muscles. And anytime you do an exercise to strengthen the weak muscle, you're doing something to the tight muscle. You are stretching it. So it's doing both at the same time. It's not about stretching. So you can stretch all day. If you don't strengthen the weak muscle, nothing's going to come up. Nothing's going to happen. You can come to me. I can adjust your spine all day. You can walk out the door and everything can fall apart because the muscles are weak. So we're getting nowhere. It'll help you feel a little better. But you know how it is. Next week you're back in. Going nowhere, right? Here's just another look. So back at this other one, we have the tight psoas. What is that? The tight iliopsoas. So it starts here. It actually attaches to the discs. I don't really like the placement on this picture, but it kind of shows how it can pull your lumbar spine forward. You're supposed to have a curve, but that's way too much curve. And you see what it does to the low back. People are like, oh, I always got pain right here. Why is that? Because it's so tight. It's so jammed up. Butt sticking out. Tight muscle running to the hip. It also runs on the front of your pelvis, which you'll get to here. So there's another look at the psoas. There's two portions of it. Psoas minor, psoas major. We call it iliopsoas because this is the iliacus. This is the psoas. They pretty much do very similar things, so we usually group them together with one name, and that's the iliopsoas. So you can stretch that one. But the counter to that one, what is the synergist? It's actually the glutes. Glutes do the opposite. So if this is pulling this way, it's pulling forward, where are the glutes? They pull down. They pull that tailbone down. And there's also some other muscles at work there, too, like the abdominals. I know, right? The core strength muscles. Another picture there again. Uh, this is, you're looking at the front of your spine, if you didn't catch that before. But you can see how it attaches to the discs. There's your sacrum, your tailbone. And a lot of times, if you're tight on one side, you can create a, a curvature of that spine, left or right. So it's not that they're always both tight. Sometimes one's tight, one's not. We'll get into that later on. This is your piriformis muscle. This is on the back of the, the spine here, attaching to the sacrum, the tailbone. And then um, a lot of times we see this with people crossing their legs. So just another example of how muscles can get deformed. You're crossing your legs, you're stretching this one way, and the other one's getting, you know, if you're tightening one, the other one's stretched. Um, piriformis syndrome is when the piriformis compresses the sciatic nerve coming out from the spine here, runs right underneath that muscle. Sometimes the nerve goes through the muscle, or sometimes it goes over top. So, so uh, some people do have issues because they have because of development. So moving back to the top of the spine here, this is looking at the thoracic and the cervical portions of the spine. We see the rhomboid muscles attaching to the spine. These are very weak on most people. I'm not expecting you guys to all remember this. I'm just giving you some examples of what your core muscles are and what major weak muscles we see and how it works. So if the pecs are tight, the rhomboid muscle is overstretched. The rhomboid is the synergist to the pectoral muscles. So if your shoulders are forward, the rhomboid muscle is going to be weak. It pulls your scapula inwards. And this is why you have a lot of pain in the mid-back, and it's always popping. So you're like, you like lean backwards, you feel all those pops, you got to do it all the time, you're pushing on your chair, trying to get those pops. The bones are out a lot of times because of muscle weakness. When the muscles are weak, the ligaments and the joints are left to do the job. And if they're left to do the job long enough, that develops arthritis. We don't want that. Bad. Here's just another example of the forward head translation. The ear not being over the shoulder, like it should be. That pectoral muscle will really pull the shoulder forward. And we got the weakness in the neck flexors and the tightness back here. The tightness of levator scapula. This is not labeled, but that is your levator scapula. So if you've got hunched up shoulders like they're high, like the, uh, this girl, see our shoulders are kind of high and forward. The levator scapula is tight. Tighten a lot of people. 
Sometimes it's tight on one side over the other, and so you get a head tilt. So if that right side's pulling, it's going to pull the skull down. So we're looking at the chest here. We got clavicle, sternum, ribs. And we have your pector, pec minor here. What are all these yellow and blue and red things coming out here? These are your nerves and arteries. We call this the neurovascular bundle. Or if you're just talking about the nerves, it's the brachial plexus. So if you ever have numbness or pain shooting down your arm or coldness in the hand, it could be from compression of the neurovascular bundle or the brachial plexus. It can happen by um, compression of the muscle here, the pec minor or the scalene anticus, or just the bone. It could be the ribs. It could be rib one, rib two. Sometimes people have an extra rib giving them trouble. And a lot of times it's just that that's the muscle is so tight and it's pulling forward and involving in the neck. If you get certain fingers that are numb, it could possibly be from the neck because the nerves branch out at different levels and they come together and form one big mass before going to the various places of the arm. So each part of your skin has a different nerve that goes to it. If all of the nerves are getting compressed, you're going to have complete arm or complete hand numbness. Why you feel in the hand more is because you have more sensory receptors in your fingers. This is because when you're touching and feeling, it's important. Like what I do all day is I feel people's back. If I feel people using my elbow, I'm not going to be very accurate. It's going to be painful too because it's kind of bony. So a little bit on that. It works the same way in your low back with the sciatic nerves and there's different lumbar nerves go to different parts of your feet. But we can show how posture is very involved with that. Yes, sometimes it could be a single bone that's out of place, but a lot of times it's the posture that causes those bones to be out of place and causes weakness. If you're strong and your muscles are strong, bones don't go out as often. Yes, there's injuries. That's what chiropractors are for. Another look at the shoulder girdle. A little more detailed here. You just see some of the muscles. Here's your big pec muscle. You got your deltoid. So the pec's often tight pulling the shoulder forward, and then you got pec minor underneath that. And um, we know about rotator cuffs, right? Rotator cuffs are the big issue. A lot of people have rotator cuff issues. So those are the stabilizing muscles of the shoulder. They pull that joint into socket. So if in balance, again, you're going to have the shoulder being pulled in a certain direction because the muscle's being unbalanced. Try not to get off topic too much. Looking at the feet, just a lot of the same stuff. All right, people's calves are always tight because <clears throat> we don't use them. Look at that high heel. What is the calf doing? It's shortened. If it's shortened, it's contracted, and everything's stretching in the front. Some people get shin splints from this. Some people get deep calf pain from this. Then we try to wear normal shoes. We're like, ah, oh, why is our calf tight? Because we're stretching again. It's not used to it. you got to work it back into it. This affects the foot. I don't like shoes. A lot of people see me walking around with my funky shoes. This is why I wear my funky shoes. I have a lot of feet problems. So <clears throat> I found ways to strengthen my feet. Wearing shoes is like wearing a cast all day. It's not good for you. Too much flat ground, too much hard flat ground. <clears throat> and walking with only using your ankle is going to lead to problems because of Muscle weakness. Everyone talks about arch support or back support. Strengthen the weak muscles. You can support all day, but if you don't strengthen the weak muscles, you can, I, I know I'm, I'm kicking the dead horse way too much. So we're just gonna we're gonna move on. We get arch claps. Why weak muscle? Weak muscle innate. I get it. I think I get it. Moving on. Uh, life or size is a word you hear me use. You know, treat everything that you do as an exercise and anyone who hits the gym knows proper posture is key turn that guarding into some deep squats and stretch those hamstrings don't forget to keep your core tight and your shoulder blades squeezed washing dishes brushing your teeth changing a diaper tighten that core and for god's sakes watch your posture herniated discs can be caused by lifting a hundred pound bag of concrete improperly or by bending at the waist to pick up a pencil it happens. You might be laughing, 
I got lots of people like, I, w I didn't do anything, man. I picked up a quarter. You know, it's just over time. People don't get It's like it didn't hurt yesterday. That doesn't mean there wasn't a problem yesterday. It doesn't mean that there wasn't a problem 10 years ago. It's just today it hurts. It takes practice. You'll get better at it. So, first world issues is a big one. Lack of the squat. Many other cultures just do the squat. That's how they sit. They, that's how they pick up objects. That's how they go to the bathroom sometimes in some countries. Today we sit on chairs all day. We ride in cars all, cars all day. We pick up objects wrong. So this guy's doing it right. Squatting down. He's facing the object he's picking up. He's going to hopefully stand up before turning with that object. Keeping his core muscles tight. So life or size. It doesn't matter what the weight is. You need to lower your body properly. You don't have to be in the gym to function like a human. It's supposed to function. Break the mindset that this is extra stuff you have to do and realize that you've been cutting corners all your life. When you cut corners, it leads to crashes. It leads to injury. You don't have to be playing sports to injure yourself. And there is exercises you can do like kettlebell things. They're great because it reverses a lot of bad posture. So there's little things like that I'll get into in later videos. But I'm going to keep plugging along here. Uh, so this is a great picture I found. Uh, I just typed in before and after squat exercises and this was just a 25 day challenge. I don't know what she was doing. She could have been using kettlebells or weighted squats but we can see a lot of changes. What I like is I see before her shoulders are in even. Hopefully you can see that. The left is a lot higher. I see so a little bit in the neck too is distorted. And you can see the blades lower here. And you can see how the right one's really winged out and the other one's pushed in and higher. You can even see it in the bra strap too. You can see the muscle difference here too. You can see those ribs popping out. This takes a more concentrated eye but you can see her hips are shifted to the right I see a lot of tightness in the the TFL there going into the IT band that's affecting the knee if you look down here you can see look at that Achilles look how it's turned in like that that band is it's just being warped it's really bad for your ankles this is why you get your ankle problems so that's excessive what do we call that pronation right so a couple of different issues. And she's just doing this for a month. Not even a month. 25 days. Just doing squats. Probably nothing crazy. You know, she doesn't look like a bodybuilder. We get over here. What do we see? First thing we see, that squats gives you a tan. No, just that was a joke. Sorry. Maybe it's darker out. But her shoulders are even, right? A lot better. We can still see a little bit. And as far as I know, she didn't go to a chiropractor. So what happened? She strengthened the weakened muscles. So she had to be doing something else besides squats. So when you do squats, you use your arms. So she's definitely working these shoulders somehow. That that leveled out from exercise. I see the hips are level. I see a big change in that IT band. It's a lot more even. Now look at that Achilles. Look at that. It's beautiful. They're, they're nice and even now. We don't see that curve inwards anymore. It takes a bit of an eye to see this stuff, but it's definitely there. The hips are level, just from just from strengthening the weakened muscles. That's one example. And you can definitely see a lot more tone in here in the paraspinals and the multifidus muscles. And the spine's much straighter than it is here. So here's some guys, some reputable looking characters, hanging out. Just flat-footed squats. How many of you can actually get into that position? Not many. There's other issues besides just joints. You know, um, sitting affects your digestion. Not squatting when you go to the bathroom leads to problems. You know, a lot of diverticulitis, IBS, hemorrhoids. Later video. <laughs> Last thing I was going to get into quickly here is chiropractic. It's not what you think it is. It's not magic. Most of you shouldn't be coming as much as you do. 
and chiropractic does not correct your posture. When I get done with you, yes, you look straighter, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Your shoulders are even. Maybe it's till you're out the door. Maybe it's still next week. But if you don't strengthen the weak muscles, it's not going to last. And some people that come in, adjust them a few times, they're good. I don't have to see them for a while until something goes wrong because they try to take care of themselves. Just as muscles are synergists, I need a synergist. I cannot be working alone to fix a problem. It requires two. So you got to strengthen the weak muscle. you got to stretch the tight muscle. And it's true we have bone degeneration of joints that make certain movements hard. That's what your chiropractic is for. We get the joints moving. So it allows you to exercise. We give you the function in order to exercise. So your body can reverse degeneration by putting the stress back on the muscles where it belongs and not on the ligaments. <clears throat> the cascade of joint degeneration either comes from injury or from damage over time due to improper muscle balance leading to wear and tear. Joints become misaligned because of muscle imbalance, and after correction, the weak muscle must be strengthened, beating the dead horse once more. All right, so we got Granny doing here like a, a plank in the air. There's probably a name for that. I don't know what it is because you don't see me doing that. So it's not because you're old. If you keep your body strong... You can keep going for it. We were meant to live over 100 well. And not just live, but to live. Because it breaks our hearts. When we have to correct the same issues every time. We come back in, the same bones are out. I shed, I shed some tears. <laughs> Injuries will always happen, many of which can be avoided if your body is in proper alignment and balance. So we strengthen ourselves to make injuries less, and sometimes to avoid them altogether. A lot of soccer players do a lot of different types of running to strengthen their ankles so they don't sprain them because they're kicking these balls all day and they're doing slide tackles and you know and, and we uh, we step outside wrong and we sprain our ankle. So how are these guys doing it? You know, if you strengthen your ankle, you know it's not about support. It's like people you know, I need to wrap my ankle in duct tape and, and put myself in a bubble suit. Maybe some of us need to do that. I don't know. But if we strengthen the weak muscles, we'll be, wait, we'll be better off. Kicking the dead horse. I'm sorry. So multiple areas of spinal misalignment can indicate imbalance. Usually if there's an injury, it's one or two areas of the spine. It's one bone at a place. It's like, I slept wrong, doc. Okay. Pop it back in. I'm good. All right. That's how it should work. Our bodies should be able to handle things like whiplash better. Why do you think kids can ride all those crazy roller coasters? You know, their heads bouncing back and forth, and, ah, laughing their heads off, and they come out there still laughing. Ah, you ride it, you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> where's Nate? So the imbalance is already there before the roller coaster. Your muscles aren't strong. You got like one tight muscle holding on uh, during the roller coaster ride. Being like, what is she doing? Maybe if I had my buddies working with me, this wouldn't be an issue. But it is an issue. So it's not because you're old. Everyone tells me it's because they're old. And it's not. So we have three different categories of conditions. We're going to cover them very quickly. And I'm going to probably have videos on each different one of these. Because they're just so expansive. And right now you're just going to be like, what, what, what? Wait, wait, wait. So just, you know, let's do them quick. Category one. It's articular. Articular means joint. Fancy Latin word. So all conditions in some way involve the joints. As nothing acts alone. But in this case, articular is the cause. Chiropractic is the big go-to. This is our money maker in order to deal with this one. So we're good at this one. We're able to correct the joint issue. If the joint is the problem, we are your man. Category two, it's muscular. Imbalance in the muscles unilaterally. That means my bicep's tight on one side and it's not on the other. It's not just the bicep. I'm just using the bicep today because most people know what a bicep is as an example. So one's tight, one's not. So it's usually like a dominant hand thing or doing things, uh, one-sided activities. I should just read my own notes. It's better than me trying to come up with uh, <laughs> phrases here. So a chiropractic may be able to help by keeping the joints from becoming locked, but unilateral exercises and reversing one-sided patterns of movement are key 
So it's a joint effort. I don't know if I meant that as a play on words, but that's kind of clever. Category three, we got ligamentous issues. So we got degeneration and arthritic buildup due to ligaments attempting to stabilize the spine because the, we the, the, because the muscles are imbalanced bilaterally. So I have two weak biceps, which is never really a thing, but we're going back to the bicep issue. That would be like more like weak both abs. That's what I see a lot. Both sides of the abs are weak. So that means both of the paraspinals in your back are tight, jamming up your lower back. So category three, ligamentous. So this starts with the upper cross and lower cross syndromes that we were talking about earlier. And it's compounded by years of postural neglect. The ligaments are your supporting structures and have no contractile components. Chiropractor provide, chiropractic provides temporary relief but cannot fix this issue unless the patient takes it upon themselves to make the changes. What else is chiropractic good at? Getting stress off the nerves. Where do the nerves go? Everywhere. They do everything. If you've got pressure on your nerves, you could have lung trouble, heart trouble, liver trouble. You don't even know about it. Why? Because you don't get pain in those issues. When your <clears throat> gallbladder hurts, where is the pain referred? It's your right shoulder. You'd be like, ah, my right shoulder hurts. It's just my shoulder. You know, so it doesn't match up. So yeah, chiropractic is amazing. I'm not trying to belittle it, but I get a little frustrated. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for sticking through it. Please visit our Facebook page. I'm going to create a YouTube account. It's not created yet because this is my first video. So uh, hopefully I'll get better at making them. Um, if you have any questions, you can message me on my chiropractic Facebook or on the YouTube page when I get it created. So thanks again for listening. I know it was a little harsh, but it had to be done. It's like ripping off a Band-Aid. Okay, take it easy, guys.